Hello and welcome to Barry's Basics, where our guides are straight to the point and strictly only the basics. In this guide, I will be going over the basics of the Wintercoat boss encounter. As far as requirements go, you will need at least level 50 in the fire making skill. You will also need to complete the Client of Corinth quest for access to Corinth. While it isn't a requirement, you should also consider completing Druidic Ritual and purchasing a player-owned house before taking part in this activity. As far as required items go, you will need an axe. Optionally, you can also bring a hammer, knife, and tinderbox. All of these items, including a bronze axe if needed, can be easily obtained during this activity. It is also suggested to bring food for this encounter, as you will take unavoidable damage while in the boss area. To reach the Winter Tote boss area, you will need to travel north of the Archaeus House area of Corinth to the Winter Tote Camp as indicated by the red circle on this map. The Winter Tote Camp is directly south of the entrance to the boss area and also has a bank chest, making resupplying for this encounter very easy. There are several different methods for reaching this area, but I will only be going over a few of the more common methods in this guide. The first and quickest method is by use of a Games Necklace Teleport and then selecting the Winter Tote Camp option. This teleport location is locked until you have taken Veos' ship to Corinth at least once. The second method is by use of the Fairy Ring Transportation System using code CIS and then walking north. This Fairy Ring location can be unlocked after paying at Trosa, who is located near the Fairy Ring, 80,000 coins. If these methods are unavailable to you, you can sell to Corrent by speaking with Veos in Port Serum and then walk to the Winter Tote Camp. Once you have reached the Winter Tote Camp, you can begin the encounter by walking through the large door just north of the camp. Before you begin, it is recommended to use one of the official Winter Tote worlds. The Winter Tote boss is able to be completed alone, but when learning the encounter, it is recommended to use one of these worlds. As of the creation of this video, the Winter Tote worlds are 307, 309, 389, and 311. When you enter the large door to the boss area, you will find supply crates within an entry corridor. As a side note, the majority of this entry area is safe, and you shouldn't take damage there. If any supplies are needed, you can collect them from the crates in this area. The Winter Tote boss is a skilling boss, meaning this boss is not slain using typical combat methods, but instead a non-combat skill. In this case, the fire making skill. To damage the boss, you will need to burn Bruma Roots or Bruma Kindling on one of the four braziers located at each corner of the large opening in the center of the room. The brazier you are using must be lit by use of a tinder box before you can use your roots or kindling on it. Bruma Roots can be obtained by chopping the large roots in the outer corners of the room with an axe, and Bruma Kindling can be obtained by using a knife on the Bruma Roots. Doing this will provide fletching experience based on your fletching level. When active, the Winter Tote boss will passively and randomly damage players due to its cold aura. This damage is unavoidable, but can be greatly reduced by wearing at least three pieces of warm clothing. Many equipable items count as warm clothing, including several holiday items like the Santa costume, hunter gear, a staff of fire, and much more. To keep this video short, I've provided a link to the list of items that are considered warm clothing in the description of this video. The Winter Tote boss will also occasionally conjure snow that will fall in random areas and cause damage to any players standing in that area. This attack can be avoided by looking out for the snowflakes that will appear over an area before the pile of snow falls and running from that area. This attack can also occasionally fall onto one of the braziers. This will cause the brazier to shatter. If you are standing near the brazier when the snow shatters it, you will take the same amount of damage as you normally would if the snow landed on your player directly. Braziers can be repaired by left-clicking them as long as you have a hammer in your inventory. This will provide construction experience based on your construction level, provided you have a player-owned house. Along with the player taking damage from these effects, the pyromancers located at each brazier can also take damage. If a pyromancer reaches zero hit points, the brazier at that location can't be lit again until the pyromancer is healed. Players can heal the pyromancers by gathering bruma herbs from the sprouting roots that can be found on the eastern and western walls and then combining them with an unfinished rejuvenation potion. You can obtain unfinished rejuvenation potions from the supply crates mentioned earlier in this guide. 
This completed potion can be used on an injured pyromancer to revive them. To create this potion, you will need to have completed the Druidic Ritual Quest. Creating this potion will also provide herb lore experience based on your herb lore level. All damage taken in this encounter scales with your maximum hit points. For example, if you have 10 hit points, you will take less damage than someone with 99 hit points. During the encounter, you may notice an interface in the top left area of your screen. This interface displays the points you have accumulated, the Winter Tote's remaining energy, the status of each Brazier and Pyromancer, and a timer to indicate when the Winter Tote will respawn. Outside of experience, you will also receive points based on your contribution during the encounter. If you have at least 500 points when the boss is defeated, you will receive a Supply Crate. Any number of points above this will provide a chance for an extra roll on loot from the drop table, with a guaranteed roll for each additional 500 points gained. These supply crates contain loot including various materials like herbs and ores, pieces of the Pyromancer outfit, a Phoenix pet, and more. This concludes the basics of the Winter Tote boss encounter. If you require more advanced information on this topic, you can find a link to the official Old School RuneScape Wiki article on this topic in the description of this video. If this guide helped you, please take the time to give this video a like. If you'd enjoy more videos similar to this one, you can subscribe to this channel for easy access to all current and future content provided. To be notified of future content from this channel, you can also left click on the notification bell located next to the subscribe icon. Feel free to leave a comment to make a request for a guide similar to this one, and thank you for watching.